Hello friends, welcome to this session. Today we will try to see how you can use Azure Table Storage and access it using Postman. Uh, there are REST APIs which are published through Table Storage Service and you can access them through Postman to uh, create data in table or you can update the data or delete the data. Also we will see how Azure Storage Explorer can be used to view this table data and you can add data to this table storage. So to get started, um, log into your portal and I have already created a storage account, con to storage account and within that I scroll down I have a table created con to table storage. Next to that is a URL which you can use to access this table. Now I will be using Postman and for that you would need a shared access signature. So if you click on this, here it provides you a shared access signature, a type of URI that grants restricted access rights to Azure storage services. Now I have already generated one where you can have a table and allowed resource types with allowed permissions and using this we will be actually creating data into this table which we have. Now if I open Postman, you see here I have this post table data query created. Now the operation will be post and this is the shared access signature which I created for table storage. This is the storage account. This is for table dot table core windows and this is the table name which I will be creating data to. And the rest of this is the SAS token. Now once the URL is done then we'll go to the body. Uh, we'll create a JSON you see here JSON format. Actually table storage is a NoSQL key value pair type of storage where you just provide a key and a value to it and it will store. So that entity is stored in partitions and every partition should have a partition key and every entity will be identified uni using a unique row key within that partition. So these two things you have to pass uh, to store that entity in table storage. Rest of these are the properties of that entity. So I have just created one and in headers you have to create a key content type and value will be application JSON. Now I will just click send with this data and you see here status 201 so it is created and in the response you can see it shows the partition key the row key which I sent and all that data which I submitted the JSON format so key value pairs. Now once this data is posted you can actually fire another REST API to access this data and see whether it is really created or not. Before that one more thing to see here in the response here in connection as it tells me this is a partition key and this is a row key which it has created. So this we will use later when we will be deleting this particular record. Now I have another get request created here and in this also this is a URI and the table and rest is the SAS token attached to it. So if you go to body we don't need to provide anything. In header we will say it accepts only the application JSON format. So we will click send and in the response you will see that one record which is created. So this gives one record which is created here. We will just create few more records. So we will go to post data. In the body we will just change the partition key and the row key to make it unique and then we'll send and response is 201 created. If you go back to get data table and click send, we'll see it will show up two records now. So this is the first record and this is the second record. Now we got two records. Now whenever I am running get data table, I have actually written a small script in under test where it receives the response and the row key value of the first record is saved in a global variable row key and the partition key value of the first record is saved in partition key global variable. So this is now globally accessible. Now we'll go to the delete request and the request is same but with a difference. In the table with the table name I am passing the partition key and this is a global variable from where it will get the value and this is a row key and then the source SAS token with it. In headers it will be accept application JSON format. You also have to pass this if match the value is star then it will always be able to delete it. So I will say send and the response is coming 204 no content. 
this is the right response because actually it is not providing any data when it deletes a record to verify that you can go back and run get data table requests again and previously we had two records when we'll send this request again and we receive only one record if you remember partition key 103 is already deleted so this is the way you can access uh, the storage account table storage using postman so now we'll see how the same table storage we can access through storage explorer uh, if you are not familiar with storage explorer then you can go to microsoft site and download azure storage explorer here and install it when you install and invoke it it will look something like this on storage account we'll now connect to our azure account there are different ways to connect uh, you can see one of the videos which i have created for that here I will be using account name and key to connect to this storage account. So we'll say table storage account name. We have to get it from the portal. We go to the portal access key and here is account name and the account key is this particular key one value. So we have all the storage types here. I will expand this tables here. You see it is spawned to table storage is accessible now and it immediately shows the one record which we created using postman. Now I will just go back to postman and quickly post one more record. I will change this ID to 115 and we'll just make this unique send and the response is positive. It's created. Now we'll go back to Explorer and we'll just refresh it and you see the record is created. So uh, if you go to portal, there is no way you can you cannot see the table data using portal. So the only way is to use either Postman REST API call or Azure Storage Explorer. Also, you can click on add here and it will give you all the property names and you can assign values to it and then insert. This will create the record. Also, you can select one of the record and edit and you can change values. Say I make it this 144 and update. So it becomes immediately and you can also delete so it's very easy to use postman rest api calls or azure storage explorer to manipulate the data in table storage table i hope this session will help you thank you so much for watching this